What is, eternal life? Is it, the wind as it blows upon you, and then leaves, as if it were never there? Is it, an abstract thought, or, is it an intangible thing? Or, is it just words, to describe an occurrence? What is, eternal life? Does it mean, you won't see death? Does it mean, you will escape corruption? What does it mean? The first time we see these words in scripture, are in Daniel chapter 12 verse 2 saying, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Instead of using the words, eternal life, in this passage, the words, everlasting life, is being used. They both have the same meaning, and these words, will be used interchangeably, in our passages going forward. So we see, that after death, some persons will be raised to everlasting life, never to die again, and others raised to everlasting contempt, also, never to die again. But also, in that day, at the appointed time, there will be those, who will escape death, and be granted eternal life, while they are yet alive. These will be changed, to receive everlasting life. Scripture says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. The word, sleep here means, to die. We shall not all die, but be changed, in a twinkling of an eye, from mortal to immortal, and thus to everlasting life. So one class of people, will be raised from death to everlasting life, and another class of people, will be changed, while yet alive, to everlasting life. Again, what is, everlasting life? Scripture says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, to obtain everlasting life, whatever it turns out to be, you have to believe on Jesus, to receive it. God, sent Jesus, his only Son, to die, shedding his blood on the cross, for the sins of the world. Why, believe only on Jesus, and not also on Mohammed, or Buddha, or, Krishna? It is because, there has never been a man, to walk the face of the earth, that could save himself by keeping the works of the law. Only Jesus, of all men, was able to save himself by keeping the works of the law, thereby proving that he, and only he, of all men, earned righteousness, achieved by works. Therefore, God has ordained, that every man, believe on Jesus, the only man who proved himself righteous, by working the works of the law, and not falling short on any statute. Scripture says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even as we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Listen to this discussion, Jesus had with the rich man, how he wanted to achieve, everlasting life by works. And behold one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, 
and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. We just learned previously, that no flesh can be justified, by doing the works of the law, because all who try, will fall short. Yet, when asked by this rich man, what good thing shall I do, to inherit eternal life, Jesus replied, keep the commandments. Jesus knew he was falling short in the area of his riches. The law says thou shalt have no other gods before me, yet, this rich man's riches had become a god to him, as he was not willing to give it up, to follow God. Therefore, he was lacking in good works, and so forfeited eternal life. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. This is why, the only way to eternal life, is through Jesus, for it is only he, that was able to keep the works of the law, perfectly, showing him to be the only champion of righteousness, and possessor of everlasting life. By our believing on Jesus, God will give to you, the gift of the righteousness of Jesus, and thereby you will be credited his righteousness, and justification to receive everlasting life. What is, eternal life? Has the answer come to you yet? If you have not figured it out, here is the answer. Listen to the words of Jesus. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. In case you missed it, he said, I am, the life. Do you remember when Jesus said to the Pharisees, Before Abraham was, I am. I am means. The eternal being. I am means. The source of life. I am means. The life giver. When Jesus said, I am life, he was saying, I am the eternal being, and giver of eternal life. So eternal life is. I am, and I am is, God. Jesus said again, in another place. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection, and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. In Jesus, is life, as he is the creator of all things living. And to those who believes on him, and are subject to the penalty of death, for being a sinner, he is able to overturn that sentence, and infuse you with, everlasting life. Now, not only was Jesus righteous, and therefore not subject to the penalty of death, as no sin was found in him. But being righteous, his Father and his God, dwelt in him, affording him, the full power and authority of the Godhead. So his Father, God, who is life, also dwelt in him, enabling him with the ability to give eternal life, to all those who will believe. Scripture says, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me, that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Remember this, that the Father, was always in Jesus, and the miracles Jesus did, was as a result of the Father being in him. Even the words, that he spake, were the words of the Father that is in him. It was even the Father in him, who is self-existing or life, that raised up Jesus from the dead, on the third day. So eternal life is a person, the Spirit of God, living in Jesus, who comes to live in you. Therefore, 
if you are a believer, you possess eternal life, by God the Father being in the Son, and God the Son, being in you, by way of the indwelling Holy Spirit. So you now, possess all the members of the Godhead in you, which guarantees to you, everlasting life. Scripture says, And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, as thou hast loved me. Okay, let's examine the event, with the Samaritan woman, and Jesus at the well. Scripture says, Then cometh he to a city of Samaria which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink for his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Here, Jesus likens everlasting life to the properties of water, and that being refreshing, cleansing, and life-sustaining. But in living water, and that being the spirit of the living God, which is life, will never be void of life-giving sustenance to those who believe on his Son Jesus. And once you believe, eternal life will come and abide forever in you. Notice, that in every case, the living water, the Spirit of God, and eternal life, has to be in you. As in, become a part of you, before any of its properties will affect you. The food that we consume, from outside ourselves, to get inside ourselves, for it to nourish ourselves, is a temporary fix for the continuance of life in ourselves. But once the Holy Spirit is in you, it is a permanent fix for everlasting life, and does not have to be replenished on a daily basis, to continue life, as we must do currently with our food. Let's look at the following, Scriptures. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. I am the living bread which came down from heaven, if any man eat of this bread, he shall live for ever. So to draw a picture for his audience, Jesus uses the analogy of eating, to explain how eternal life, that would be, a living life, will come to be in you. He said, any man that eats of this bread, speaking of himself, will live forever. This is the same, but opposite of what Adam and Eve did in the garden. They ate of the fruit, and received death to themselves. While in this case, you eat of the bread, and receive life for yourself. In this way, we will gain back to ourselves, what was lost in the garden. Now check out this scripture, it grossed them out. But it is meant in the same way, as the bread analogy. Just a little more detailed. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. 
for my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Wow, that sounds like cannibalism, that is a hard saying, but in simple words, it is just saying in order for me to help you, I must become a part of you, you must partake of me, and the way for you to partake of me, is through faith in me. Your belief in me, is permission for me to become a part of you, and I will be in you like food, and nourish you like food, to life everlasting. In other words, you will be made alive, and live by me. And for those who do not believe, and have not the Spirit of God, Scripture says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. If you'd like to be saved, and have the Holy Spirit in you, which is eternal life. Tell God, you believe Jesus died for your sins. Tell God, you believe he was dead and buried. And tell God, you believe he arose on the third day. If your confession was from the heart, then Jesus, the bread of life, and living water, has made his home in you, and he will raise you up, at the last day. Thanks for watching. Eternal life, is the person of God, living in you. It is the Father in the Son, and the Son in you, taking you from death, to everlasting life. If this study was helpful to you, please share it with your family and friends, and subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Christ in you, the hope of glory.